Hey everybody, this is Jada Lynn. I know I haven't uh, done a video in a while, but um, I am back with another video. And this is the channel where we sit and discuss narcissism, what it sounds like, what it looks like, and what is up close and personal in your face. Now, so what I want to talk about today is narcissistic silent treatment. Um, what is narcissistic silent treatment? It is the sneaky, deceitful, backhanded tactic that narcissists or toxic people use to either punish you, control you, or to express some kind of jealousy that they have towards you. Okay, um, I want to talk about the emotional part of this whole thing that the partner, the significant other, or the friend or the family member can encounter during the silent treatment. Um, you can encounter anxiety and depression. Um, this anxiety and depression can have you feeling hypervigilant. It can have, a, have you feeling like you're walking on eggshells and it'll create this kind of limbo feeling as I, I don't know what the heck is going to go on. And then you feel anxious. And then that anxiousness is usually followed by depression. You know what I mean? So um, then there's another feeling you can feel isolated and lonely. You can really start feeling isolated and lonely even when your significant other or your friend or whoever this toxic person is to you is um, in the room. And um, dealing with this is not a good feeling. It just, it doesn't feel good. It makes you feel rejected. It makes you feel unworthy, unwanted. You just don't feel good and my thing is is that it's um there's nothing wrong with the narcissist the narcissist is just trying to run away and take accountability not take accountability for what it is that they've done said or whatever whatever the heck went on for a certain situation or something that happened they're take they're refusing to take accountability and um and but we'll talk about that later um but my question is is that you know pay attention to how it makes you feel when like how does it make you feel when you realize that that same person that used to talk to you and treat you like a queen or whatever da 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 uh is no longer treating you in that way they're not giving you any attention in fact not only are they not giving you attention it's almost like they are going out of their way to make you see that they are enjoying conversation with other people pay attention to that because that hurts that hurts real bad uh confusion and disorientation you're going to feel very confused you're going to feel guilty uh, because you don't even but you don't even know why you're feeling guilty you're just confused mainly number one and the confusion is usually followed by some kind of guilt because you don't know what you've done. And if you did do something, then how come this individual won't just sit and talk to you about it? So it's like, well, what the heck did I do? And you may have even tried to approach them, but you just, you don't know what you did. Um, it's just, it's just, it's very off-putting. You know what I mean? It just doesn't feel right. It, it just doesn't feel good um, at all. And um, the physical symptoms that it causes, I wanna go into the physical symptoms. It can cause you headaches, really bad headaches, especially if you are, if you receive this type of uh, silent treatment repetitively, like on a regular basis um, from a significant other. You can get really bad headaches. You can have a hard time sleeping. You can end up with, uh, uh, you know, digestive issues like Crohn's disease, ulcers. You can have uh, issues with weight gain or weight loss, things like that. But what triggers all of this stuff though? I mean, really, what triggers it? Anything can trigger it. When you're talking about a toxic person or a narcissist, it's gonna be something very small. It could be a perceived challenge to their ego, meaning you could be an empathetic person. Maybe they feel like they're not. You could be really good in the arts, like cooking, singing, poetic, uh, w whatever it is. They feel like they can't do it because they feel like they don't have that certain je ne sais quoi that you have. And now it feels like they're just taking it all out on you. When they see you being in your strength, you could be talking to somebody else and they can hear you talking to that other individual and they wish that they could be like how you are. Seeing you in your strength, in your power, 
and that would be off-putting to them. It could be something so small, or maybe you could have said something and not knowingly, you know, it bothered them or hurt them in some kind of way, but instead of them verbalizing that to you, they're gonna give you the silent treatment. And that's just, that's what could trigger it. Um, and what goes with that is the withdrawal. And what, go, what happens with the withdrawal is that they just stop talking to you they completely cut you off. They stop talking to you. And if they stop talking to you, that's usually followed by they don't want you touching them either. And if they don't want you touching them, if you guys are married or whatever, and you, you know, relations or whatever, and they're not trying, trying to do that because they're trying to make you feel, they're trying to make you, they're trying to punish you for whatever it is that you did. And then that just like, what, what the heck, I I have needs too, I'm a woman, or I have needs too, I'm a man, or whatever it is, and you're not verbalizing this with me, what is going on, you know, type thing. So it's like they're, and that brings me to the, you know, the punishment part. This is the punishment, like they, okay, they can punish you for something that they've done. <laughs> That's the weird thing about it. Um, and if they feel like like they're about to lose you, they may very well instill the fear into you first by, you know, flipping the narratives around like how classic narcissists will do or any toxic person will do. Flip the narrative around and make you feel guilty for whatever it was that they did and say all of this at you, say all of that at you, do this, do that to try to keep you where you are. And then they go silent on you. And then you're like, oh my God, okay, he or she said this. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe I shouldn't have done this or maybe I should have never said that. Da, 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 da. But in reality, they're the ones that are afraid to lose you. They're feeling like you're about to get up and leave. So now they're just trying to flip it around and make you feel that way so that you don't get up and leave them. And then you end up apologizing to them for something that they did. That is just how it goes. It is sickening, it is ridiculous. Um, but my next point, it, that's a punishment and that can last anywhere between like a few days or a few weeks, maybe a week, or it could last longer than that. It just depends on the, the person or the severity of the issue or how deep rooted it is. It just, everybody is different from person to person. And, um, but my next point is the reconciliation. This is the part that really got me because they can, they will come up and talk to you as if nothing happened. They'll just start talking to you, like how you saw them talking with their friends and, you know, dissing you though, and just start back talking to you, like how nothing ain't never even happened, like how y'all never, y'all didn't, and it's like, I would be sitting up here looking like, really? What the heck just happened? Dude, you gonna sit up here and start talking to me like you ain't been talking to me for like a whole week? What the heck is going on? What was that? all last week about what was that and all of those questions that you have right there they don't want to answer that they ain't trying to answer that they don't want to answer that they pretty much a lot of the times a silent treatment may be you could have found out something that they did and they'll just give you silent treatment because they're trying to give you enough time to move on from that situation and then they'll just when they think you've moved on from that situation and then they'll just come out of nowhere and just start talking to you uh, you know, I like nothing happened. It's a little bit too much. Um, but yeah, they'll start talking to you as if nothing happened and they want to move on and they expect you to move on. But you, if that happens, you need to be like, uh-uh, uh-uh, no, hold up, hold up. <laughs> we not just going to sit up here and ignore that you weren't talking to me for like the whole week or however long it's been. I want to know what happened. Did, did I do something? No, you make them talk about it. You, 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 you bring it to their attention and let them know that this is not going to fly with you. Because if you don't do that, they're going to continue to do it again, which brings me back to my next point. They're going to repeat that whole cycle all over again. They're going to find something to get triggered about. Then they're going to withdraw from you. And then they're going to start punishing you with the, with the silent treatment. And then they're going to want to, they're going to want to reconcile as if nothing happened. You know, how do you put an end to this? or how do you deal with it? Because in some situations we're married or we're, you know, in a, in a living situation. But there, there are certain things that you just, you just can't just dead at, at the moment. It, it may take some time, um, but you gotta recognize the patterns, number one. And I strongly suggest that you do research. 
um, uh, anytime you like when you recognize the patterns, just realize that this whole thing, the silent treatment is emotional abuse. Emotional abuse is not a healthy dynamic of a relationship, of a healthy relationship. It's not healthy at all. It's abusive. Okay. Um, when you are in a relationship with somebody and there is a problem, you come together as, um, as a couple, you know, you guys are together. So you sit down and you talk about what you think is wrong. What do you think went wrong and how y'all can go about solving it so you can move on. And that's how a healthy relationship is supposed to be. And if they're not doing that, then you got some things to reconsider. Okay. Um, second, you got to set boundaries, set boundaries. You have to, and when you set these boundaries, do not let up on anybody. Do not let up on the narcissist or that toxic person that's put you in this position where you have to set boundaries in the first place. Set these boundaries and let them know that if you do this again, this is the consequence that's going to happen. If you set a boundary and then let up on it after they love bomb you or breadcrumb you in any kind of way to let you know that this is not going to happen again. I'm so sorry, baby. I love you. I'm not going to do this again. Just please forgive me. And you fall for it. Oh my goodness. Because all they're doing is running game on you right now. And they're playing on your emotions. They're pulling your heartstrings and they banking on you falling for it. And the minute you do, got you and that's how they know that they can use your own boundaries against you to get what they want so set these boundaries and stand firm on them i would like to say set boundaries in place and drill them in drill them into the ground drill them in they're not going anywhere they can't be let up by you or anybody else so set these boundaries and leave them in place and if one of these boundaries go in no contact then do what you got to do go no contact but don't be unblocking them just to argue with them don't do that that do now they know how to get with you do you hear what i mean that's what i'm talking about support team get you a good support system i would suggest a therapist but everybody don't have a therapist you know what i mean or are not in a position to get a therapist and if you're not then that's when close friends and family comes in play and if you do get close friends and family, then just make sure that none of these friends and family have any kind of affiliation with the narcissist or the toxic person that you are currently dealing with. Make sure that it is somebody who's gonna keep the private things that you are talking about confident between just you and them. You hear what I mean? Or that particular person, but make sure that, because if you are still hanging out with the narcissist and you're, if you're still with a narcissist, but you're confiding in the narcissist's sister or the narcissist's cousin or the narcissist's best friend, don't you think that information is going to get back to them? Don't do that. Don't do that. Because now they're going to use their friend as a way to, to get as much information from you as they can. Did you hear what I mean? Don't do that. Because at the end of the day, it becomes a game for the narcissist. It's already a game to the narcissist. So this is what you don't have to play the game. And when it comes down to like the silent treatment, self-care is very important. When it comes down to the silent treatment, this is a time for you to enjoy your quiet time. If you're a dude and your lady is a is, is a nurse is a narcissist, go to the barbershop, get the get your shape up, get your you know, your 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 beard and your goatee and all of that shaped up and all of that, get you know, edged or whatever. You know, y'all know what y'all do at the uh, hair salon or whatever. Go go to the barbershop, go hang out with your dudes, enjoy a uh, fun conversation with the guys. Don't and I know it's easier said than done, but don't get so caught up in that because my thing is is that it's a game to the narcissist. When the narcissist sees that you are playing their game, meaning that you're sitting around the house, you're moping around, trying to figure out, you're hanging on every word. Baby, what did I do? What did I do? I'm so sorry, da, 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 da. Don't do that. They're watching you. Now they know how to play with you the next time they want to do it. Continue doing what it is that you normally do. Go to work, go hang out with your friends. If you're living with this with this female narcissist, uh, t tell them, listen, I'm getting ready to go hang out with my guys. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna go to the restaurant. Uh, do you want something to eat? I can bring you something to eat, okay? She may have an attitude, no, I want nothing to eat or whatever. Let her have an attitude. Let her have her attitude. Go out and have a good time with your guys because at the end of the day, she's the one that's giving you the silent treatment. How's she gonna give you the silent treatment if you are off enjoying yourself and, and hanging out with your dudes and doing this and doing that? At the end of the day, she's the one that's giving her own self the silent treatment because she's being left there sitting there looking like a fool. Leave her to it. Same thing with the females. If the females are dealing with a male narcissist, go get your hair done. Go hang around with these girls. I mean, hang around with your girls. Go to the mall. Go to the movies. Go. Same thing that I just said for the fellas. 
but take time for you. But also, while you're taking your time, how, pay a cl close attention. How do you feel when you are with your girls? How do you feel when, we, when you are with your boys? How do you feel? Do you feel happy? Do you feel like a nice social butterfly? Do you feel like a huge relief is off of you because you get to enjoy your boys or your girl? How do you feel? Do you feel good? Pay attention to that because if the answer is yes, then you need to, you need to consider some things. Do you hear what I mean? You got some things that you got to consider and that's just what it is. Um, just think about it. Do as much research as you can because knowledge is power. It's, if you have research, if you have knowledge under your belt, you can use that as the biggest weapon against them. Okay, stay safe, you guys. And I just want to come on here and just throw my little two cents on that. Um, and I'll see y'all in the next video. All right.